Amen. <laughs> Pastor Bland, I love you. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn with me, please, to Acts the 13th chapter. Acts the 13th chapter. So we are grateful, and I just echo everything that Pastor Bland uh, said. I think I need to, I need, is that a little echo? Yeah, a little bit of feedback, just a little bit. <clears throat> wonderful, wonderful study. Wonderful word of God. It's good to uh, come to the Lord's Academy so that we can slow it down a little bit and just talk uh, about the word of God and just uh, look into uh, how uh, God has laid it out for us. So right now we're in the early church stage. We're in the early church stage. We transitioned from the gospel stage and now we're in the early church stage. So we know that in this stage, we're gonna talk a lot about Paul. We're going to talk a lot about Paul because it is Paul who established uh, the majority of the churches when we talk about the New Testament, if you will, that he established uh, churches uh, as we begin to look at what happened uh, subsequent to uh, uh, the day of Pentecost, those things that happened subsequent to the day of Pentecost. So. Uh, in Acts the 13th chapter, we know that if you would go to, um, let's see, do I have the right, do I have the right uh, slide up there? Mm, no, I don't. Is that, can you, can you, um, does that, is that, does that say June 27th? Because I really want that map up there. Mm-hmm. I might, it may not be the right one, Brother Curtis. If so, it's on my jump drive. Okay, all right. Well, we'll just go on. Oh, <clears throat> so in uh, Acts of 13th chapter, we know that they started out, started out in Antioch, which was in Syria. And uh, they traveled through several, several, um, Towns, if you will, they ended up, we're talking about now, yes, that's it. Um, they ended up in Antioch in Pisidia. And in Pisidia, uh, up at the top, that Antioch, so, so just want you to distinguish the two, the Antioch and Syria became their headquarters basically. That's where they were headed out of. And so they, they traveled from there to the other areas to preach the gospel, to spread the word of God. Uh, this morning, we'll pick up where they are in Antioch and Pisidia. And there they were, uh, on the Sabbath day, they were reading the law and the, uh, the prophets and the rulers were all in the synagogue. We know that's a, that's a custom. That was a custom. And so it was also a custom to have a visiting person to, to speak. And so um, in verse 15, and after reading of the law and the prophets of the rulers of the synagogue, and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue, sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. And so then Paul stood up. And as we talked last Sunday, when Paul stood up, we know he rehearsed the history of Israel, as did uh, Stephen. Uh, uh, he rehearsed the history of uh, Israel to go through the history to talk about how they got to the point where they are now. But there's something a little bit different about what Paul is getting ready to do. Uh, in this particular exhortation, Paul dropped the net, drew the net, drew the people in as he began to talk about all that had happened and all that led them to this point. Uh, talked about how uh, Jesus Christ came as the root of Jesse, Hey, Deborah, I want to make an observation, mm -hmm. uh, something that confused me, that there actually are, you have it on the map, but to just call attention to it, there are two Antiochs. Absolutely. Yeah. And Absolutely. And I don't know, when, like if you said Helena, I would think Helena, mm -hmm. not knowing that there are two, one, and, in, one in Syria and one in Pisidia. Absolutely. Actually, there are several, but yeah, these two are distinguished. And we, we um, right now, where we are now, they're in Antioch of uh, Pisidia. So um, he told them then that through faith, Jesus, 
Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ, they could have two blessings that the law could never provide. Wow. Wow. Two blessings that the law could never provide. Go over to verse 38. Acts, Acts 13, verse 38. So this is becomes important because he introduces the doctrine, if you will, of justification. That's um, mind blowing because the Jews up to this point have been taught that God justified the righteous and punished the wicked. And Lady Deborah, it, it reemphasizes for me the necessity that you read for yourself. Because I never heard that till I got here. And that's in Acts the thirteenth chapter. And I when I came, when I got said, I wasn't no preacher. So the preacher should have known this, I've been teaching this before I got here. When I got here, something as important as a turning point, and it's in Acts the thirteenth chapter, but I understand. I don't put blame on on men necessarily because uh, that's Satan's that, that's his uh, uh, assignment, to keep me blind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Blind. Absolutely. That's very important, though. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You all, if you have comments or observations, feel free to hop in, okay? All right. So in Acts 13, verse 38, after he finishes his sermon, if you will, he says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, what man? Jesus Christ. He had gone on, uh, before we get to this point, he had espoused about how Jesus came up through uh, the lineage of David and how David had to die. But Jesus, uh, he died, he was begotten of God when he was resurrected, never to die again. And so uh, he says, be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins and by him all that believe, the word all, what does all mean? All means all, all means everyone. And Lady Deborah, something I never was told either, was I guess because they wanted to keep me in the sharecropping mentality, it's sins, not sin, it's sins. That means past, present, and future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That his blood forgives me of all sin. Good point, good point. And by him, all that believe are justified from what? How many things? All things. From all things. Because, you know, we put degrees on the sins. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll say some things, you just, that's just too bad. God can't forgive them for that. Yeah. You know. And so, uh, by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not, everybody say could not could not be justified by the law of Moses. This is what they got me with, Lady Deborah. They, I don't remember them necessarily saying that God couldn't forgive all sin, you know, but they put a, a, a condition on it. He'll forgive you of everything, just don't do it no more. You know, if you do it over again, if you do it again, then you got to start all over again. But Jesus ain't going back to the cross no mm -mm. more. He's not shedding mm -hmm. his blood mm -hmm. anymore. So when we talk about justification, we talk about the act whereby God, God himself declares that the sinner is righteous. God declares that, and how, how can he do that? He can do that because of Jesus and because of the act that Jesus did when he went to the cross, when he shed his blood, when he shed his blood for us, and then he was resurrected for us. And, and Lady Deborah, I guess I want to talk to you. No, go ahead. Let me say this. You know, part of that is, for me, I wish I had accepted when I was 16, 17 years old or earlier that to quit worrying about how pe people see me and, and, and put more value on how God see me. Yeah. Because even though God calls you justified, people are not going to see you right. Because they're not, they're not looking through the eyes of faith. They're looking through what they see. You know, and we love to criticize and what, oh, he ain't saved. Honey, let me tell you what I know about him. When my actions 
And, you know, Paul says, by the works of the law shall no man be justified. Mm -hmm. My actions have nothing to do with my standing with God. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so you know, you have made a good point there. This is a good segue for us to talk about uh, when we talk about justification. It has to do with our standing. It has to do with our standing uh, before the throne of God. So I, I don't think I have the right uh, slide up there. I thought I did. I do. Okay, so let's go all the way over to um, keep going. No, go back, go back, go back, go back. Mm -mm, that's not right. Mm -mm, that's not right. That's all right. That's okay, though. We'll just talk it through. So we're going to talk about our standing and our state. This is familiar to us. This is familiar to us, but it's always good for us to revisit it because we have a tendency to fall into or be lulled into thinking that, um, that our uh, state is, is who we are, is who we are, which it is basically, but we have a tendency to begin to rely on what our state is when sometimes our standing in our state, it seems a total contradiction. And so we need to understand that uh, when we talk about our standing, when we talk about our standing, it has to do with our position. It has to do with our position. Um, when we talk about our position, we're talking about our position as a child of God and how God sees us in Christ Jesus, okay? It has to do with all, that, all things that are true, uh, of the believer. Because why? Because the believers, as believers, were saved by grace. That's our standing. That's our position. But when we talk about our state, we're talking about, uh, uh, we're talking about how we are at any given point in time. We're talking about how we act. We talk about what, what we do. Uh, we talk about, uh, and that can depend, Sister Jackie, and let's just talk about that. That can depend on several factors. What are some factors that would uh, depend, that would determine uh, our walk or our state? Our, 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 our state is the way, what we're doing every day. Our state is how we behave in certain situations. So what would depend, what would, what would determine uh, our state? Okay, so come on, let's, exp let's, just, let's just keep going with that. It's about our position and not our condition. Because sometimes my condition depends on, sometimes all we have to do is get up out of the bed. You know, pastor says that all the time. He ain't playing. Sometimes you get up in a bad mood. That's your condition. But does that mean you're not saved? Okay, when you look the cash cashier, when you look at the cashier sideways, uh, Jackie, you can attest to that. I, I was, two weeks ago, I went to Hayes, and I ordered a lot of things. I ordered a lot of things. But the lady gave me what she wanted me to have, and I told her I didn't want that. I heard about that. <laughs> but anyway, so I said some things, and she took the the, the chicken and threw it back up in the thing. And I told her, I said, you know what? Maybe you should go home and start all over again. I said, but if I'm spending my money, I should be able to get what I want. Mm -hmm. But anyway, after all that was over with, I really felt bad about it. And then I wanted to go back and apologize, but I couldn't. So last week I saw the lady and I did apologize to her. And I told her that I had stepped out of my character. She said she didn't remember. But, you know, sometimes, regardless of who you say you are, you can still love God and set it off. Mm -hmm. You know, and I do love God, but I do have some issues. Mm -hmm. But then now I've grown to the point where I can go back and apologize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But even if, even if I wasn't wrong, 
you know, I could still apologize. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, very good example. That's a personal example. Okay, anybody else? What are some things that determine, what are some factors that determine our state, our, our walk? What are some things that determine our state? Sometimes it's, it's the, um, well, I won't even go there. Yeah, you just talk back to me. What are some things that determine our state? Awesome. And we take it personal That's and we right. put it on other people. That's great. Instead of we taking ownership of ourselves and right. deal with it. Right. We take it on other people. And I find it I find it easier to live when you have a fruit of the spirit attitude, tender hearted, kindness. You can go through life all day and people won't bother you because you're in a self motivated, like you always say, carrying your own happy wagon. Yeah. And you know, you know, you know, that is very good, very good observation. You know, some of the things I think, Pastor Blam, that might get us caught up sometimes is because, see, we, I'm just going to talk about me when, you know, I uh, was first saved, when you talked about being saved, sanctified, yeah. filled and baptized with his precious Holy Ghost. Now, when you talked about being saved and sanctified, you feel like you ought not do anything. You ought not do anything. And so then when you do, when you find yourself looking at the cashier crossways, when you find yourself saying something that you shouldn't say, doing something that you shouldn't do, you have uh, condemnation and guilt that comes upon you because you have this thing about, oh my God, I'm sanctified, I shouldn't be doing that. Also, I think it comes down to where your faith is, where your faith is placed. If my faith is placed in me, then I become Pointed in me, yeah. but if my faith is, is placed in God, then, then I'm never. Uh, Y'all thank God for the young man. Jaden. Me and Robin <laughs> got too old to walk around. We got us a new walker. <laughs> <laughs> so since I have the wrong uh, uh, graphics up here, I really do kind of need the board so we can just kind of write on it a little bit. So if you could get that for me. Uh, and let's just do a little uh, walking. Let's just do a little writing on the board. We're going to talk about our standing in our state because, y'all, this helps us. This helps us. It helps to relieve us of the guilt. It helps to relieve us of condemnation. We need to understand that there's a difference than how God sees you, than how you walk around and how you act. Yeah, and, and Martin Luther, in, in history, there was a great theologian named Martin Luther, and in the 1600s, he agonized over the fact that he could not be perfect. He agonized over the fact that he made mistakes, even though he was saved and he loved God. Why did I keep messing up? And he would do things like he, was, he lived in Germany. He would go outside in the cold without adequate clothing on, and he would beat his body. He was trying to do something to bring himself into subjection where he would walk perfectly before God. And finally, some wise person showed him in Romans, the just shall live by faith. Our uh, standing with God has to be based on what God has said and not our ability what we can do. Because self will always, I will repeat that, self will always let you down. talk about our standing and our state. The very obvious difference in our standing in our state is that our standing is a result of what Jesus did on the cross. Okay? So let's remember that. 
Okay? So we'll, we'll put that up there. What else we have to understand about our standing, you know, when I was talking about uh, when I was first saved and how but you're sanctified, you're, you know, you talk about that being saved and sanctified, but our sanctification is something that is progressive. It's a progressive, it's a progressive, it's progressive. But our standing right now, is it any more perfect than it's ever going to be, our standing? Is it any more perfect than it's ever going to be? Say it, say it, say it. It's not a trick question. No, but what Jesus did on the cross is sufficient. Okay. So it's not going to change. Does that make our standing perfect? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely, it does. <laughs> Absolutely. It would never be perfect if it was through us. But because he did it, it's perfect. Perfect, perfect. And can you see how this would be hard? Just like some of y'all hesitated about it. Do you see how this would be hard for people to understand and believe? Because we don't want to think about ourselves as perfect. Well, we're not, but he is. And the work that he did is perfect. And because we are justified because of the work that we did, our righteousness is through him, then we are. Okay? All right. Now, another thing about our standing is that our standing is the same as any other child of God. Although, you know what you might think that some people, and we do this because we're human, we think that some people are more saved than others. Or we think that some people have a closer relationship with God than others. And sometimes it's because of the uh, natural position that they're in. Let's just say maybe like a bishop or uh, 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 someone with a high position like that. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't matter. If the Apostle Paul, God bless him, and God bless him, the Apostle Paul and Jackie Fleming, y'all at the same, you had the same standing. Paul was like the man, but you have the same standing. So as a child of God, your standing is the same. No one has a higher standing than you. And we have to understand that. We don't, we don't want to, uh, so you, you have an inferiority complex yeah. if you think that. Well, we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have to have that because our standing is the same. Yeah, like that, boy, you're right again. And, and I think that the, the, the litmus test for that is, is whether we are natural or spiritual, whether we walk by sight uh, or by faith. And when Paul was talking to the Corinthian church in the first points that out to them. Some said they are Apollo. Some said they are Paul. Some said they are, he said, but you know, we all, what, what does any man have that he did not receive? And so then whatever we have, God gave it to us. Yes. And so no, no one has the, the, the right, but when you start thinking, and let, let me just say this, I was thinking about something this morning about uh, uh, uh I was watching a, a ceremony where they were making this man the chief apostle of this denomination. And I, I tried to be honest with myself, Robert. I said that as a human being, I want to be that too. I want to be the person who marched down in front of everybody and got on different clothing and the red vest and all this right here. And I want to be the person who everybody looks up to and say, oh my goodness, look where he is. That's a lie. That is a lie. He ain't in no different place than the other person. 
because cancer come hit my body and come hit his body, and we both we both have to go, we, we go. So I have to differentiate between uh, the truth and the lie, and it's very humbling. It's very humbling to realize that you're no better than anyone else because this world is intoxicating. Power is intoxicating. When I was the boss of, of, of my chapter and everything, uh, they had to just buy more pride off his way for me because I felt like can't nobody do this like I do it. They not gonna do it and you know what? When they pride it loose for me, Anetta, it ain't Mr. Beat. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, praise God. Okay, so you touched on the point there, and this is my last point about our standing. Our standing is, is, is that, and, and this helps us to accept and receive it, Robert, when we realize that God gave it to us. God gave it to us, which means that our standing is holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy, based on grace. Grace, and grace is what God does. See, God is the only person, God is the only entity that can put something somewhere in Mother Minute and it ain't gonna move. God is the only one. When they were worshiping the temple and everything, Jesus told them, he said, you know, because it was so many years made and it was a beautiful temple. He said, this temple, everything about this, this is gonna fall. This temple. This building that we in, if, if time, if Jesus delay his coming, it ain't gonna be nothing one day. You know? You ever gone back to something, like I can go back to Elaine School, where we used to, it, it ain't nothing. But with God put something somewhere. And so I have to put all mother my faith and trust. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Because this is the only stability it is in the world. It's God. And if God put me somewhere, and if his blood cleansed me, no matter what I do, because I, I, like I say all the time, you can say what you haven't done, but you don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. And you know, the last point about that is, you need to get you some people that love you no matter what you do. Oh, <laughs> okay, so then, thank you, Pastor Valand. Uh, so by that same token, if our standing is perfect, then our state falls short of perfection. And we already know that. You know, when we leave here today, we're going to do something that, that you know, we're not going to be proud of. Uh, uh, or, something that, or something that we could have done differently. So our state falls short of perfection. Also, your state, uh, it can be improved upon, or it can be worse, because uh, y'all, sometimes we do real good. And oh Lord, we get so proud of ourselves. Yeah. We, we, when we, when we yeah. do good, we go, I, I'm thinking about, you know, <laughs> I always relate stuff to eat, <coughs> eating and weight loss. <laughs> sometimes I do real good, Pastor Bland. I'll tell you one month, the month of March, I didn't let nothing wrong pass my lips. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> April, I didn't let hardly anything <laughs> wrong pass my lips. But May, oh Lord Jesus. So you do good for a while. You can do good for a while. And then sometimes it looks like, you know, every time you turn around, you're messing up. So then your state can improve again. You know, you know, you can go a long time without people getting on your nerves and that you're not telling them or giving them a piece of your mind. You can do that a long time, and sometimes it just look like if they look at you the wrong way. You know, Lady Deborah, I find that one of the worst things is when you're in your feelings. Whoa, whoa. You know, when you get in your feelings, that's a horrible, horrible place to be. Is that the thing you tell us that not today? <laughs> not ever. <laughs> but. Because I went through that when my husband passed. Mm -hmm. And I was in my feelings with my family that's here. Not my family that's out of town, but my family that's here. 
When we had my husband's funeral here, only two of my, and y'all know I got a lot of relatives, but only two of my cousins showed up here for his, for his service. None of them came by the house when he was sick or going through, and none of them came by after he passed. So I was in my feelings mm -hmm. about that. That's easy to do. Come on, Jack. And, uh, you know, I, I had to go to God and ask God to just remove, because what, what I was feeling for those people was if they had came by my house and I had a weapon, I believe I would have did something to some of them. That's how bad I was feeling. Because I was always, no, no, no. But what I mean is I was always there for them. Whenever they needed me, I was there. But I had no support. Okay, so see, yeah, and we go all the way back to what we first started discussing. Those are some things that determine your state. Yeah. L Lady Deborah, just as something to interject as, as pastor, and, and that is the reason that I have to make sure that whatever I give from my heart and not my head. I have to make sure that whatever I do for somebody, I'm doing it because I want to, I want to do it. Not because I got expectations of what you're going to do after I do it for you. Because I'm setting myself up. Which is a, which is a good segue to the last point. Like, Deborah, do we need to turn the air down just a little bit? I see people. Are you dating? you need anybody? Turn it up just a little bit. Okay. All right. You know, you got old women and you got old women. That's cause she's sleepless. Tara knew to bring a jack. <laughs> she knew she he knew to bring a jack. <laughs> okay, so uh, the good point y'all are making because our state is not the same as every other child of God. Cause you know it vacillates based on uh, different conditions. It vacillates, and then some of us are some things we won't do, but based on uh, versus another person who might do everything. You know what I mean? So this is important. I would just suggest to you as believers that you do a study on our standing and our state. And, and, and Lady Deborah, part of it is, uh, Mother Minnie, all of the bad teaching that we've had. You know, I was taught that you were saved as long as you didn't sin. Once that you sinned, you were out of Christ. And they even condemned the Baptist teaching once saved, always saved. But you know, even the Baptists, they might say it, but they don't believe it. Cause then when they get down to pray, Lord, uh, uh, hadn't been all that I should have been. And if I had done anything to they know what you just got to do. I'm talking about if I had so, so we, as, as believers, this has helped me and I tell you what, this is the most liberating thing. It's the most liberating that we as believers have a glorious standing. Yeah. Don't let anybody take, take that away from you. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And so uh, we have a glorious standing in the grace of God. Yeah. Not, in us. not in us. It's not in us. That's what we get it straight now. Yeah. It's not in us. We've been positioned in God's son. We've been positioned, we're a child of God. And we're, we're a child of the most high God and we're seated together with him in heavenly places. That's our position. That's our standing. And that can't be taken away from us. God is not an Indian giver. Can't be taken away from us. Don't let anybody tell you. Don't let anybody tell you that. And so that it's important. It's important for us to understand that the law cannot justify the sinner. You can only condemn him. You can only condemn him. They will say stuff like, well, you're just giving people a, a, a out. You're giving them a, a, a license to do. But the truth of the matter is, is that when you know that somebody loves you no matter what, it's a special kind of love you have for that person. Absolutely. And that's the reason we love our mothers. Because no matter what, mama was still, you know, if, if she was like my mom, was still there. And, you know, I sometimes, I get angry at my mother because she loved other folk like that. 
you know, like her grandchildren and stuff. Um, like, them Negroes can't make it on their own. You see, but did I feel like that when she was loving me no matter what? And so I, what I have to always be reminded of is that, Vandal, what you have, God gave it to you. You ain't nobody special. Mm -mm. You still that ignorant knucklehead who did all that stuff. It's just the fact that God's grace has positioned you in a different place. Because if I'm not if, if I'm not very careful, Sue, I will start to think that I'm something different because of you know, like I said, when God be driving the car, boy, it look like I can really drive. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're gonna get to this point, and we're gonna go ahead and and, and close this section and and pick up here again. Uh, Sunday, but as Paul, remember now he's in a synagogue and he's exhorting as they had asked him to exhort. And this is, this is really, y'all, when we talk about this, this is good news. This is good news for me to know that I'm justified. That's good news for me. It's good news for me to know that my standing is not anything based on me, but it's based on Christ and, and the work that he did. That's good news for me. And so he closed this message, however, with a, a warning. And the warning uh, appeals to Habakkuk 1 and 5. And if you remember Habakkuk, when uh, God was telling the prophet that he was going to use uh, the enemy to discipline his own people. And in Habakkuk 1 and 5, uh, this was the warning. It says, Behold ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously, marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. They didn't want to believe that God would take uh, Babylon to discipline Israel about what they had done. So in the same vein, Paul, when we go back to Acts of the 13th uh, chapter in verse 41 or verse 40, he says, beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And so Paul was saying to them, don't be surprised that God has fulfilled his promises uh, by raising Jesus up like he said he was going to do, by raising him from the dead. And don't, don't, don't look to what he's done and reject what he's done. Don't reject what he's done and don't reject it because he's not working the way that you think he ought to work. Don't reject it because of that, because it's contrary to your expectations. And so uh, this was uh, when Paul finished this exhortation. It seemed like it was favorable, the, the things that he talked about. Maybe he had gotten through to several people. In verse 42, it says, and when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation was broken up, Many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. I'm going to stop right there because what we get to at this point is when God begins to bless, of course, the devil always messes up. So many of them began to uh, 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 look at and want to hear what Paul and Barnabas had to say. They wanted to hear that. But as always, when something good goes out, then uh, trouble starts because um, you had a contention that did not want to accept, did not believe what was uh, being shared with them. So we're going to pick up here in uh, Acts the 13th chapter at this particular part uh, next Sunday. Give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody.